Namaste everyone. Today in this video, we will talk about a very important topic of wealth. I am pretty sure that all of you know how important wealth is in today's times. All of us want wealth and the desire is not wrong as well. Today in this video, we will learn about combinations of wealth and remedies related to it and not only wealth. I will also be covering loan or rather say, you know, borrowing of money and repayment. We will go with the combinations related to it and then remedies accordingly. The first and the foremost important thing that I see in a horoscope is the strength of planets. After that, you go into combinations. There is one particular thing that you should keep very straight in your mind that if the planets are not powerful, they cannot produce enough results, right? So the basic point is, I think you all know that the second house is related to wealth and 11th house is related to wealth. Some people differentiate between it that second house is the wealth that you already own and the 11th house is the wealth that you earn. However, according to me, how I understand the classics that there is no such differentiation as such. Second house can also indicate the money that you earn and 11th house can also indicate the money that you accumulate, right? So both of them have to be seen. However, this demarcation, if it helps you, you can take it into consideration as well, right? So that's not an issue. The first and the foremost thing, the most important stuff that I have told you is the strength. See, you, you have to understand a point. Everyone has some amount of wealth. Everyone earns some amount of wealth, right? That's not an issue. That's never an issue at all. But the point is, you know, the wealth that you earn, is it sufficient enough to meet all your needs? That is what makes you financially successful, unsuccessful, whatever you say. So the most important thing is power, planetary power. This planetary power comes through two stuff. There are two factors that controls this. One is the Rashi strength. Another is the house strength. So Rashi strength wise, if the planet is exalted, he is powerful. If the planet is in Moolatrikona, that is powerful. If the planet is in Kona Rashi, that is powerful. Along with that, if the planet is in a friendly Rashi also, then also it is powerful. And added to that, retrograde planets are also powerful, right? So Sun is exalted in Aries, own Rashi in Leo, Moolatrikona in Leo as well. Moon exalted, Moolatrikona in Taurus, own Rashi in Cancer. Mars Exalted in Capricorn, Mula Tricona Aries, own Rashi Scorpio. Mercury exalted Mula Tricona in Virgo, own Rashi Gemini. Jupiter exalted in Cancer, Mula Tricona Sagittarius, own Rashi Pisces. Venus exalted in Pisces, Mula Tricona Libra, own Rashi Taurus. Saturn exalted in Libra, Mula Tricona Aquarius, own Rashi Capricorn. Along with that, for Rahu Ketu, I am not considering Rahu Ketu right now <clears throat> because of the type of analysis that I generally do. So what you first have to see, which is the Lord of the second house and 11th house. Now, as I have told you, I don't generally take the demarcation between second house being accumulated wealth, gifted wealth, and the 11th house being the earnings. So basically, I take it as two parts of the same coin. One of the second house or 11th house being powerful indicates you earn sufficient money. If both of these houses are powerful, you earn more than sufficient money. If none of them are powerful, you don't earn sufficient money is the basic point that you have to see. Now you see the which planet lords the or which planet is the ruler of the second house and 11th house. If they are powerful, as per the Rashi, I have just told you, one is destined to earn good amount of wealth. Right? 
Now in this particular scenario, sometimes there can be a good wealth related combination, but one may not be enjoying that. Here comes the role of Dasha Antar Dasha and comes the role of transit. Basically speaking, Saturn is a restrainer. So when Saturn goes over the second house or 11th house, when Saturn goes over the Rashi occupied by the second and the 11th Lord in the horoscope or when Saturn goes to the third house or eighth house from the Rashi occupied by second or 11th Lord in the horoscope, this is generally the time which restricts the inflow of money and the person can face financial difficulties. However, transits are not that much important. The most important point is Dashantar. The lords of the second house and 11th house being powerful in the Dashantar Dasha of these planets, one gets wealth. And even after the Dashantar Dasha gets over, that does not matter. Once the second house lord or 11th house lords get activated with help of the Shantra Dasha, they continue to give wealth. The only problem comes when they are, when the Dasha of enemy is going on, right? So this is a very basic concept. I have also told you that planet is powerful in a friendly sign. So take it this particular way, Sun, Moon, Mars, Jupiter are friends with each other. So Sun in the sign of Mars, Sun in the sign of Moon, Sun in the sign of Jupiter will be considered friendly. Saturn, Venus, Mercury are friendly with each other. So Saturn in the sign of Venus, Saturn in the sign of Mercury will be considered friendly. Now Saturn, Venus, Mercury, this set is inimical to another set of Sun, Moon, Jupiter and Mars. So basically Saturn going to the sign of Mars, Jupiter, Moon or Sun will be considered being in an inimical sign. Inimical sign, what does inimical sign do? Basically, inimical sign does not uh, refuse money. But inimical sign creates obstruction in accumulation of money, which can be frustrating at times also. This goes with respect to Dasha Antar Dasha as well. If a planet is inimical to the second lord and eleventh lord and the Dasha of that planet is going on, it is very likely that the person will face financial difficulty. Not only that, if the Mahadasha Antardasha Lord is situated in 212 position to second house to the second Lord, 11th Lord, sixth house to second Lord, 11th Lord, eighth house to second Lord, 11th Lord, in that scenario also one will face a financial difficulty. Now you will say there are two planets. How do I differentiate? So the basic point is, as I have told you, if the planet is situated in 12th house from 2nd Lord, right, not from the 11th Lord, then what I have told you that one of them being powerful, one earns enough money, just enough money, right? So the Dasha Antar Dasha Lord situated in 12th from any one of 2nd or 11th Lord, one earns just enough money, right? Badly placed placed in 12th house, 6th house or 8th house from both of 2nd and the 11th Lord, then the, it is a big financial difficulty where the person is even not, e even not being able to meet his minimum requirements. Planet well placed from both 2nd and the 11th Lord gives you good money. Now, it is not only the inimical placement that I am talking about, it is also the nature, right? So it can be that the planet is inimical to the second house lord while being badly placed from the 11th house lord or vice versa. Badly placed from the 11th house lord but being inimical to the second house lord in that condition also in the Dasha Antar Dasha it will create financial difficulty. Now to differentiate between the result of Dasha Antar Dasha simple point is Antar Dasha is a smaller period of time Mahadasha is a greater period of time. If Mahadasha and Antardasha both indicates difficulty, it is a great difficulty. If Mahadasha and Antardasha, any one of them indicates difficulty, whereas another shows it is good, then only 50% of the results are felt, only needs are met. And when both of them are well situated, then it is a very good sign, green signal, good to go. Much prosperity, affluence, etc. comes, right? Uh, there is one point. Generally, I have seen many comments in my videos and these comments generally arise from not carefully listening to the videos, right? And this also distorts me from answering as well, 
replying to the comments as well. Right. So make sure when you are watching my video, because I do very serious type of astrology. So whenever you watch my videos, be very careful and attentive. Right. This uh, take the proper approach of learning while watching my videos is what I highly recommend. Right. So this about the wealth. So we have basically, basically understood the matters related to wealth. Now there is two, three more points that I will specifically want to cover here. What becomes the problem in this complete setup is the Lagna Lord and the 10th house. So basically 10th house indicates people take 10th house for karma, profession, etc. This is all useless stuff. 10th house basically is success. Success in any undertaking, be it job, marriage, finance, anything, 10th house indicates success. And if the 10th lord is not powerful, you are not being successful. So basically what a weak 10th lord does is that you may be making money, but not as much as much you deserve. Right? And on the other hand, lagna indicates willpower. So when Lagna is weak, either the person don't have enough willpower, he feels dejected, depressed, fallen, you know, have self-doubt, does not believe in himself. And most importantly, Lagna indicates guidance also. So when Lagna Lord is weak, person is by default set in a way to, you know, take a wrong decision, not choose things wisely, do those things which in the end becomes detrimental to himself, right? So it is important to check the Lagna Lord and the 10th Lord as well. And only if the Lagna Lord and 10th Lord are powerful, only in that particular scenario, you can expect the person to be successful and enjoy things, right? 10th house for success and Lagna for enjoyment in life. Right? If they are not powerful in that particular scenario, if the 10th house is not powerful, then one will not be successful. He will not get that much amount of money as he deserves. And if the Lagna Lord is not good, then in that scenario, even though the person is having much money, he will not be able to enjoy it. So despite earning money, he cannot purchase things out of it. He cannot enjoy it. But his money is spent in fulfilling responsibilities and, you know, other fulfilling responsibilities, giving into diseases, giving to family members and other things happen. As I have already told you, the strength is dependent on the Rashi, exalted Rashi, Murutrikona, Rashi, friendly Rashi. And to that, the strength also depends on houses. Basic point is any planet situated in the first house, fourth house, tenth house, fifth house, ninth house, eleventh house. And second house also is powerful, right? So planet, if it is placed in first, fourth, tenth, fifth, ninth, eleventh house, the planet will be considered powerful. This is power as per the house. Other than that, power as per the Rashi, exalted Rashi, Mulutrikona Rashi, own Rashi, I have already discussed. If the planet is powerful as per Rashi also, as per house also, 100% good result will be there. If the planet is powerful only as per Rashi, not as per house, then 50% good result will be there. Right? So accordingly, you will have to judge. There is one particular point that I have left in between that is related to retrogression and planet being Vargottam. Planet being situated in the same Rashi in Rashi and same Rashi in Navamsha is considered Vargottam. Vargottam planet is also powerful and the strength of Vargottam planet does not depend on the house. So basically a planet which is Vargottam even if it is Vargottam in the 6th, 8th or 12th house should be considered powerful and the maleficence that comes through the planet being situated in a bad house can be fairly ignored. On the other hand, retrogression also gives power, but other than retrogression, all this power, all these factors of strength, power that I have told also makes the planet powerful and beneficial. But the problem with retrogression is retrogression makes the planet powerful, but not particularly beneficial. So in the case where the second lord is retrograde, it will be powerful to give the person money, but it will not be auspicious enough or free of afflictions to make sure that the person enjoys the money. And in retrospect, when the planet is retrograde and afflicted, 
afflicted affliction generally comes through the conjunction or aspect of malefics malefic planet you already know rahu ketu sun mars saturn or the aspect or conjunction of inimical planets that i have already told you in that particular scenario if the second lot is retrograde but conjoined or aspected by enemies or malefics in that particular scenario person may earn enough money right because the planet is powerful by retrogression but because of affliction he will not be able to use that money he will not be able to enjoy that money and this will further become a problem right so this is how you have to judge the financial prospects other than this there are many other factors for wealth which makes the person wealthy that i have uh, i think i have done a I have done three classes on wealth combinations in Parashar Sutra course that is available in both English and Hindi. Those who want to learn how to read a horoscope and how to make predictions out of it, full-fledged, complete prediction and analysis of a horoscope should strongly join uh, the Parashar course. The basic framework, the basic outline of analysis I have just discussed here. Right. Now, in this particular scenario, there is one general issue. People say that there are good combinations in the horoscope of people, what I have generally noticed, but they are not earning money because right now it is not the time for them to earn. Right. Now, related to time, there are two things that I generally see. First of all is the Dasha Antar Dasha. If the Dasha Antar Dasha is not supporting the finance combinations, the Dasha, the rules of Dasha have already discussed. If the Dasha Antar Dasha combinations are not giving wealth, then it is a temporary time because Dasha Antar Dasha will get over. It is a temporary time which is stopping you from getting money. This is a temporary time which indicates no wealth at this point of time. And this can be the reason you are facing an issue. Other than that, another thing is it is not the time of full blue. So basically, this is not only for the case of marriage, this is uh, for case of anything. Generally, you see things in horoscope and you find out that the horoscope is very good, but still the person is not doing well. Why this is happening? So generally, my approach is simple. There is a planet connected to the ascendant. And if there is no planet connected to the ascendant, there is an ascendant lord. But you have to see the planet connected to the ascendant, right? Note this. Sun indicate 22 years of age, moon 24, Mars 28, Mercury 25. Jupiter 16, Jupiter indicates, but for practical purposes, let's take it 30. Right. Venus indicates 27, Saturn indicates 36. Rahu indicates 42 and Ketu indicates 48 years of age. According to the planets connected to the ascendant, and if there is no planet connected to the ascendant, the ascendant lord. Connection will primarily happen by the placement of planet. If there is no planet placed, then you have to see the aspect. This planet, only after crossing the age signified by this planet, one will have the complete results of combinations of his horoscope. Right. So this is a very important funda. This is a very important principle that I have derived myself that you have to see. If there are more than one planet connected to the ascendant, aspecting the ascendant, sitting in the ascendant, or one planet sitting in the ascendant, another planet aspecting the ascendant, in that scenario, you have to take the age signified by the most powerful planet. This most powerful planet, you have to decide based on the Rashi, Exaltation Rashi, Mula Trikona Rashi, Shua Rashi, Retrogression Varguttam conditions that I have already talked about. There is one more important point. If this planet connected to the Ascendant is inimical to Ascendant Lord, add four more years to the age of activation. If the planet who is connected to the ascendant is further retrograde, then add six more years to the age of activation. For Rahu Ketu, they are always retrograde, so no need to add. If this planet connected to the ascendant is further weak, 
then add six more years to the age of activation. If the planet connected to the ascendant is inimical also, weak also, retrograde also. Now retrograde planet is powerful, so basically cannot be weak. Right, but the planet you say is weak also. Planet is connected to the ascendant. That only one planet is connected to the ascendant. That planet is weak as well. That planet is inimical to the Lagana Lord as well. So inimical to the Lagana Lord, you have to add two years. Sorry, inimical to the Lagana Lord, you have to add four years. Weak, you have to add six years. So six plus four is equal to 10 years. So you say Mars is the planet connected to the ascendant and Mars is inimical to the ascendant lord as well. Mars is weak also. So for weakness, four more years. For weakness, six more years. For being inimical to the ascendant lord, four more years have to be added, total 10 years. And the activation of Mars happens at the age of 28 years. But in this horoscope, because Mars is inimical to the Lagna lord as well and weak also, so, this, uh, so the result will not happen at the age of 28, but the result will happen at the age of 38. After that, the horoscope will come to bloom and all the results, all the combinations signified or seen in the horoscope will come to pass. So this is a funda that you have to very clearly judge. And only after judging this, you can come to a particular conclusion, right? So this is related to wealth in nutshell and there is one more particular combination that I will want to talk about. The 11th house and the 5th house, both these houses are very important in the matters of money. So 11th lot connected to the 5th house or 5th lot connected to the 11th house or both connected to each other is a very good combination for wealth. Along with these combinations that I have talked about, if the connection between the 11th house and 5th house is found in any way, then it makes the person even more powerful. You say can take the person up to the level of karodhra in Indian language or millionaire billionaire in international language, provided the fact that this planet, fifth lord in 11th house, 11th lord in fifth house, or fifth or 11th lord connected with each other are also powerful in the horoscope, not weak or afflicted, right? Afflicted, as I have told you, affliction happens with the connection of inimical planets or Malefics, right? It makes the person even more powerful and yeah, right. Once all of this is seen with respect to the Shantra Dasha, you have to time the wealth thing. Now regarding financial issues, what creates problem in finances? Now see, you know, the first and the foremost important stuff in Jyotish is Jyotish itself. The biggest remedy in astrology is astrology itself. So as I have told you, the strength of planets are important. Second Lord, 11th Lord, Lagna Lord, 10th Lord, when they are weak, they make the person financially weak. Now, to make the planet powerful, you can do two things. We are the gemstone of the planet. Make your attire like the planet. Behave like the planet. For this, you have to read more about the planets. In the case of Lagna Lord and 10th Lord, this is a safe bet. If the Lagna Lord or the 10th Lord is weak, thereby stopping you from accumulation of money, enjoying the financial happiness, we are the gemstone of the Lagna Lord and 10th Lord. In the matters of 10th Lord, only we are the gemstone of the 10th Lord, only when he is, the 10th Lord is friendly to the Lagna Lord. If the 10th Lord is not friendly to the Lagna Lord, don't we are the gemstone of the 10th Lord. Any planet when it is weak, 2nd Lord, 11th Lord, 10th Lord, when it is weak, thereby stopping you from getting money, what you have to do is you have to make them powerful and you will make them powerful by making your attire, making your approach like the planet. So for an example, you say it is sun. Sun, for sun visiting the temple pleases the sun. 
for moon blowing the conch cell every day keeping water bodies clean preserving water makes it powerful for mars mars is a generous planet mars signifies generosity for mars donation periodical donation regular donation makes the mars powerful for mercury helping children study anything or anything you know guiding children giving them guiding them for what is good to do and what is not good to do guiding children to in day to day life being their teacher being their mentor any child you come across mercury loves that jupiter is connected to giving respect to your elders specifically to priests and learned people donating to organizations specifically giving money in government related funds pleases jupiter helping women or newly wed couples will please venus helping weak people weak people sick people down trodden people suffering people will please saturn using this approaches if any of this planet is your second 11th or 10th house lord and they are weak stopping you from getting money these remedies you can particularly do to make them happy now other than that the worship of lakshmi the goddess of wealth is recommended for wealth you can worship her by chanting sri suktam that i recommend or there is a stotra sung in the praise of goddess lakshmi by indra that you can do daily yourself starting from any friday to please lakshmi other than that om hrim shrim kamale kamalalaye prasid prasid is a mantra that you can chant 108 times every day starting from any friday for financial difficulties other than that many a times what i have seen the luck is blocked somehow and this is why the person suffers right to unblock the blocked fortune luck donation of things needed by newly wed couples donation of things related to bedroom such as bed quilt bed sheets curtains pillows etc to newly wed people or anyone who is needy helps you unlock your luck and remove obstacles also help you in gaining money most importantly donation of clothes if there is any type of obstruction hurdle badha what we call in getting money or successfully accomplishing anything that you want in life the donation of cloth is very necessary most importantly if you want the blessings of goddess lakshmi remember that white color is preferred by lakshmi wearing white colored clothes having white colored things white wallpaper white phone covers white bed sheets white curtains painting your home white donation of white objects white clothes white sweets rasgulla all these things using of white things donation of white things makes goddess lakshmi be benevolent over you same is done with red color also red color is connected to kamala that is a mahavidya that is very much similar to lakshmi uses of red color donation of red color helps you get the blessings of goddess kamala as well most importantly lighting the lamps of clarified butter ghee around evening in the temple of shiva or in the temple of any god for that matter in front of shivling also makes you rich gives you money most importantly reading shiv tandav stotram in the evening time gives you wealth there is daridra dahan shiva stotram and lingashtakam that also you can read every day 
to get wealth and most importantly if there is a dearth of money that one is not even able to live comfortably in his life then the planting of tulsi tree holy basil in home taking proper care of the plant and the worship of vishnu either with the mantra om namo bhagavate vasudevaya or doing the fasts on ekadashi and purnima and by chanting vishnu sahasranam stotram is highly recommended doing this two three of these remedies because doing all of them is not possible doing two three of these remedies for a period of one year for, if you do them constantly for one year you will see the result more than one year the more you do it more the results you will see start doing these remedies on a friday the tithi on that day should be good and the nakshatra on that day should be good for from the nakshatra you are born into to check if the nakshatra is good or not you have to use the navatara scheme make sure that on the friday when you are going to start the remedy moon is not transiting into vipat chain vipat pratyari or vadhatara from your birth tara from your birth nakshatra from your birth star right this is related to wealth and most another aspect of wealth uh, what i wish to talk into this video is related to loan or borrow of money so basically what happens loan is seen from the sixth house that's a good approach but the third the tenth house also indicates loan so when the tenth lord is weak when the tenth lord is afflicted not only afflicted see affliction have one more aspect malefic planet situated in the house or planet inimical to the rashi lord situated in the rashi also afflicts the rashi weak 10th lord afflicted 10th house afflicted 6th house see i am not saying weak 6th lord afflicted 6th house makes one go into the sector of loan like make one have some loan that they cannot repay kind of or one borrows money and then gets stuck generally this happens now if the second house 11th house other financial combinations that i have already talked about is good then of course when the money will come one will repay that another thing is a very powerful 12th house lord <laughs> generally what happens when the 12th house lord is very powerful one have a tendency of taking money in that particular stuff what happens one have a tendency of taking money and one have a tendency of spending and if the 11th house is not powerful one gets into this bad circle of loaning you know takes it takes a lot of money take takes loan spends that money and because 11th house is not powerful not able to repay it back so generally this becomes an issue and however there can be multiple purposes for taking the loan right it is personal loan car loan home loan and all of these things and generally what happens see people are not faulty there is no fault of the one who is taking the loan everyone in the starting wishes to pay the loan back it is the projection of the native or forecast of the native which goes wrong that creates an issue in paying back the loan and as i have already told you the projections i will be able to do this much in next 2 years i will do this next this will happen this way i will do this all of this comes from the ascendant so if the ascendant lord is weak ascendant lord is afflicted this generally indicates that the projections of the native the plannings of the native will generally fail leading him into an bad situation now when one takes the loan see this this generally happens you know people generally say sir you have told the combinations but you haven't told the dasha antar dasha when this will happen as such a foolish question it is still in jyotish the simple concept is the dasha antar dasha gives the result of the planet whatever the planet is promising the dasha antar dasha gives you this that result so i told you planet inimical to the sixth lord 
malefic planet in the sixth house planet inimical to the tenth lord malefic planet in the tenth house weak tenth lord strong twelfth lord is supposed to give you loan this will happen in their the shantar dasha if the eleventh lord is also weak afflicted other wealth combinations are not there lagna lord is weak afflicted there is planet malefic planet in the ascendant there is planet inimical to the lagna lord in ascendant there is malefic planet in the 11th house there is planet inimical to the 11th lord in 12th house in their dasha antar dasha there will be problem related to loaning one will not be able to pay the money back which will further create issue for the native itself right so this is what you have to see with respect to dasha antar dasha dasha antar dasha is a very serious kind of a topic and uh, which needs much careful assessment and if you don't know how to analyze the dasha antar dasha properly how to expect which results will come into the dasha antar dasha if you cannot accurately time the things in the dasha antar dasha you don't know jyotish right that's a hard fact jyotish is all about prediction right clearly telling what is happening today the dasha analysis you need of the current time and clearly telling what will happen in future only when you have clearly seen what will happen in future and what is happening now you can suggest the native anything you can suggest remedies to the native you can give him advice that this is what you are going to do into jyotish and to do that you have to know how to accurately how to accurately know the results that will come in any dasha antar dasha and tell it to the native this you have to accurately know and for this you have to know the principles of dasha unfailing principles of dasha accurate principles of dasha and this i am teaching in my dasha bhed course right that is going to start from the second week of november right so if you really wish to do something good in astrology not only not in astrology if you want to know what will happen in future accurately precisely with 100% accuracy and 200% confidence if you want to know infallible rules of the shantra dasha prediction and if you want to have a clear sight of what is going to happen in future and what is coming in future you should join my dasha bheda course i think that th this is the best course i am doing the third and the last batch of it right now and only after i have broke my research i broke my research way back for the first time in 2017 18 the revolution in predicting and accurately assessing the future events with help to with the help of the shantra dasha came in the world of vedic jyotish right so you have you should seriously learn it going further you have already understood how you know the loaning becomes an issue now to come out of the loaning related issues there are three four things that i generally recommend i have seen it working first of all there is a rin mochan mangal stotram rin mochan mangal stotra you should find it from the internet should read it every day starting from a tuesday any tuesday make sure that the tithi and the nakshatra is good nakshatra is not vipat vad or pratyak from your birth nakshatra the tithi is good the day should be tuesday from that tuesday order a rin mochan mangal yantra in front of that yantra wearing red clothes red t-shirt and any colored pant sitting on a red cloth chant rin mochan mangal stotra the first remedy secondarily going to the temple of lord hanuman every tuesday and giving red sweets to lord hanuman every tuesday in evening time with a prayer to give you financial success and make you able to repay your loan and come out of this humiliation is also a very effective remedy that i have seen another remedy is every wednesday you can go to a temple of lord ganapati in the evening and when you go take two laddus with you leave one laddu in the temple 
like first of all put both the laddus in front of lord ganpati pray to him for financial success and to be able to repay your loan after that leave one laddu there take one laddu with you and eat it as a prasadam start this remedy ganpati remedy from a wednesday prin mochana mangal stotra and hanuman remedy from a tuesday on a good tithi on a good nakshatra if you do it dedicatedly without missing any day like any wednesday or any tuesday for continuous six months you will be able to successfully repay your loans god will not give you money but give you opportunities and ways by which you can accumulate money and can repay your loan not only that for any types of chinta for any types of tension uncertainty including inability to repay loan the 32 names of durga goddess durga durga dwatrinsh namala durga durga tiharani durga prashmani if chanted every friday also helps you in repayment of loan the 32 names names of durga start chanting it from a friday and continue it every day the remedies have to be done for one year straight however only in 6 months you will get new opportunities of earning wealth and you can repay the loan very easily only one thing you have to keep in mind once you get the opportunity of earning good wealth because you have started doing the remedy for repayment of loan you have to be honest and the first thing that have to be on your mind is the repayment of loan i hope this video have helped you a bit in understanding your horoscope and learning jyotish a bit in november i am also going to do a three class course every class is around 2 hours so it will be around 6 hours in november also also i am going to do a three class 6 hours webinar on detailed analysis of 6th house 8th house and 12th house different aspects of it complete covering a to z results of planets situated in the 6th 8th and 12th house results of planet aspecting the 6th 8th and 12th house result of the lords of 6th 8th and 12th house going to different houses making different combinations being weak being strong if you want to learn in depth analysis of all these three houses in one webinar you should join the 6th 8th 12th house webinar which is going to happen in second or third week of november thank you for watching this video have a good day